This is Keep It A Back show right here on Young Force TV, the realest news show in town. Let's get into it. Generation Z, crazy make the same moves, occupy parliament, turn the mandamano, try bless, party less, you don't see mamo, they killing us for protest, see bado to na machon, RIP to our heroes, wash our candles, haki wengao na mlinzi, nyonyeshe politician gani mwenye simu easy, Sunday wako church, pasta kuwa bariki, Monday check in news, another scandal liko kwa TV, yo, kuna shugli na taka gambogi, you must go, tunaimba kwa maploti, ujengi shule, kuna madawa kwa hosi, Tumejamu si jifanya uja notice How do you dare guys are back? Sure is not going anywhere Yes, what's up, what's up, wonderful people, what's up, what's up I do hope that everyone is doing well And you are excited to be with us on this particular episode of the Kenyan Podcast I want to welcome each and every one of you to the show I do say karibuni sana and uh, you all are much welcome to keep it interactive and engage with us on our different social media platforms. You can find us on Facebook and podcast. Uh, you can find us on Instagram and podcast. And you can also find us on this wonderful platform X as well as on threads and whatsoever other uh, podcasts in our platform that you get to uh, subscribe to. My name is Spikes and we also do have uh, Rachel. How are you doing? I'm good, Spikes. I'm glad to be here today and have this live session. And by the way, I'm uh, wonderful. Uh, Tuesday, no, oh, go on. Find your intro. Melita platform, the Young Force TV. Young Force TV. So, yeah, my, that's uh, yeah, my that's week actually is not bad. And the layer. Equal to. <laughs> Sorry, what? My week is not bad. Equal to, like, there's nothing yeah. new. Yeah. I'm a man. Ama venye ni Wednesday, bado ni mapema ku, it's too early to tell venye wiki ita, ita turn out. Ama Wednesday, Wednesday ni, na, ni midweek, so at least tunafaa kwa at least na, na an idea and an assessment. You say, like, it's going great, ama bado haifiki uh, vile inafa. It's just a normal week, nothing special, like uh, nothing yeah. special has happened, so yeah, for mm. me it's just the same. All right, and uh, this particular week, that jam, this particular week, I would just like to ask you, what is your what is your feedback about that particular jam? It's by uh, BN and uh, Brida, and uh, mm-hmm. it's known as Amanda Mano. So, what is your opinion about that particular song? I'm a feedback, I'm a reaction. Hey, I like it. I fuck with it. It's a really good yeah. song, and of course, I love Brida. And I represent yeah. uh, rap, hapo, and of course, mm. Bien, the you know, our legend. So mm. it's a great mm. song, and it's just as mm. expected. The artists are great, the music is great. They delivered, you know, actually, both of them are they delivered on that particular song. I'm not mm-hmm. sure whether that is the very first time that uh, Brida and uh, and uh, Bien have collaborated. I think that is the first time that they have, they have both collaborated on the song. But uh, anyhow, yeah. I also do feel that uh, for real, for real, uh, Wame Wakilisha believe you and uh, that particular project, it's jamming. For anyone who hasn't listened to that particular one, please make sure you go to uh, YouTube. Uh, you can search for Mandamano 
and uh, it's Amanda Mano by uh, BN and uh, BN and of course um, uh, we do have uh, Prida LW you know he's doing the most on that particular one as well and I also yeah. want to appreciate him so so much yeah I want to appreciate him so so much for also doing putting in a whole lot of uh, good work on that particular song as well and uh, today we are looking forward to having an engaging short report and discuss Mambo Tofauti Tofauti Ambayo um, and Andelea Kutendeka some of the things that have happened already and uh, just uh, in retrospect and also looking at the future on what is going on. Remember, this is a podcast where we get to link up and uh, get to talk about matters affecting us as a Kenyan people right here in the 254 and even globally. And uh, we do hope that uh, we are able to inspire uh, unity among us, our people as a Kenyan people, wherever we are as a Kenyan people. And now uh, remember, we also do say that we are not tribal on this. We are tribeless on uh, this particular show. And now we also yeah. do say that Kenya is our business and our business is Kenya. And that is the way it's supposed to be. So welcome to the show. Uh, for those of us who are joining us for the very first time, please make sure you subscribe, uh, hit that like button, uh, subscribe, uh, also share. And you can also retweet, repost, uh, reblog, you know, share all those particular things that you might do on there. Please make sure you do them. And uh, talking about Manda Mano, you know, that particular exam we played you. There are so many thousands and thousands of people turned out to the Manda Mano. And uh, as we are speaking, you know, so many families are actually mourning, you know, because what happened is that uh, after those particular Manda Manos, uh, there were so many people that were abducted. A whole lot of our youth were abducted and uh, their yeah. bodies, um, you know, some of them went missing. Others were, you know, they were dumped after being, uh, after being uh, uh, kidnapped and assaulted. And there was this particular one individual that was listening to when he was giving his experience. You know, he was sharing his experience uh, of uh, being kidnapped. And he's actually a student at the Kenya School of Law. And uh, he is the chair of the Kenya, uh, the Students Association in uh, the Kenya School of Law. And uh, this was his experience. Let me share a bit over this particular video. And then uh, you can all let me know what you, what you feel when you watch this particular video. And uh, you can let me know what 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 is your honest opinion? You know when what when when you watch this particular video. Kika na watu alikuwa na risasi ikilipuka, wengine wanalala. Kwanza kuna moja ilipigwa nilikuwa hapo. Nilisema, iwapo ntakufa katika hii struggle watapata watakuja kupata hii watajua kwamba nilikuwa nimejitolea na nilikuwa ready niliona mwenzangu akiuawa na moja ya risasi ambazo walikuwa wanatumia um, ni hii hapa ilipofika kitu saa kumi, saa kumi na nusu tukambiwa tulikuwa pia kwenye mitandao so tukambiwa kwamba KDF wame, wameambiwa wanakuja town so na sisi tukatoka the day before nilikuwa nimeambiwa kwamba kuna watu wananitafuta walikuwa wanatafuta kwa sababu Kuna wanafunzi wawili tena wa Kenya School of Law ambao walikuwa wameabductiwa at 5 a.m. in the morning. Alafu baadaye wakapatikana. Lakini kabla wapatikane nilikuwa nimetoa statement kama the governing council. Tunajua kwamba kuna mambo ambayo yalifanyika. Sasa tupe hicho kisa kutoka baada ya siku hiyo ya Jumanne sasa kufikia hadi siku ambayo uliweza kupatikana. Nikapata namba tatu zinanipigia, namba tatu. Hizo namba nilishare kwa rafiki zangu hata kabla nitoke. So mmoja aliniambia Okayo uko wapi? Mahali uko toka tu saa hii. Kuna watu wanakutafuta. I was like, "Hi." Okay. Kidogo kidogo tena namba nyingine tena nyingine tatu. So niliposikia hivyo pia mimi nikasema, "Hi." Ini serious. Nilipotoka kwenye na, um, you know my main residence like five, 600 meters away from there. Nikaitwa tena nikasikia mtu anaitwa Okayo salimia watu wako wa KSL bwana alright so nilisikia ah, ah ni watu wananijua ni watu wa KSL kwa hivyo nilipotana kwenda kusalimia watu wangu wa KSL nikashikwa so they were uh, walikuwa watu watatu uh, si wazee si vijana rika ya katikati ya yeah, watatu wakanishika wakaniingiza kwa kwa gari uh, kulikuwa na driver kwa hapo anangoja so waka drive off yeah walipo drive off wakani weka pingu kwa mkono nyuma alafu wakanifunga wakanifunga kichwa yeah wakanifunga kichwa na uh, sackcloth ya black 
and then work a drive off. Yeah. Sasa um, Okay. <laughs> wali po drive off, wali wali nyamaza for you know for like 30 minutes just driving. Alafu akaniuliza bona mnaanda maana simple hivyo so nilikuwa sikuwa nataka kuongea sana so nilikuwa najibu lakini pia because ujui ni kina nani yao nikasema tunaandamana tu juu watu wengine wanaandamana na tunaandamana because we want to be in solidarity with the Kenyans wakaniuliza motivation inatoka wapi ni nani anawaorganize Alright, nani anawaambia muende streets? Nani anawa printia t-shirts? Na mimi si na majibu kwa sababu mimi hakuna mtu anatuprintia t-shirts, hakuna mtu anatupea pesa, hakuna mtu anatupea fare. Hakuna mtu tunajua sisi tumejitolea kama kama wa Kenya ambao wako concerned na tunataka tu, at least tusaidie wale ambao hawawezi kwenda kwa streets sisi, sisi wenyewe twende kwenye streets. Wakaniuliza uh, uh, kuhusiana na the the letter ambayo niliandika the communication i made kwamba two of our students watolewe wakaniuliza ni correlate daje na our students the two of them nikamwambia those are just students so walikuwa nauliza who is our informer you know nani anatupea information kwamba world bank wali draft i mean imf wali draft the finance bill 2024 nikamwambia it's all out there tunasoma wakati huu walikuwa wananiuliza wakinyamaza so wanauliza wananyamaza wanauliza wanany and they're driving the first stop wali stop wakaniingiza kwa gari nyingine i could tell so sisi si nimekaa na wao sasa wakati huo nilikuwa nimewameniaka nyuma hapo kwa boot so tena kwa nikakaa kwa boot sasa uski wakiongea uski aulizi umeswali mnaenda tu alafu about 2 hours waka stop nika tolewa tukatembea nikaingizwa kwenye room i could tell it's a room nimefungwa nimefungwa macho nimefungwa mikono na nilipoingia kwa room wakanisukuma nikaingia hapo nikakaa wakatoka sawa nilipotoka waka yeah Okay. Yeah. That is uh, Joshua Kao. Of course, a student at uh, the Kenya School of Law who was uh, actually abducted and uh, he was uh, having a uh, difficulty explaining uh, what did happen. Uh, when he was uh, kidnapped because so many people were wondering uh, what did happen to these uh, individuals that were kidnapped some of them were uh, got an opportunity to get back to their families others uh, their bodies uh, have actually been uh, found uh, dumped uh, for example with the case of uh, denzel uh denzel omondi uh, whose uh, parents you know are looking for justice right now uh, simply because this particular young man his body was found dumped at a quarry um uh, near actually a quarry in Juja. And uh, when it comes to the accountability, you know, and also people being answerable, uh, we have seen this particular situation where it seems like, you know, things are going on as, 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 as business, business as usual, which is a problem with our country, you know, business going on as business as usual. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, I would, if I was to be asked, you know, about uh, that whole situation and now where we are going, where we are actually going to, I would say that uh, things are really not looking uh, much better according to uh, even uh, this particular interview. But that was one particular man who was uh, quite lucky because he was able to go back uh, to his with his, to be with his family. But uh, this is also another different situation of uh, Denzel. Let me share a bit of this and uh, also you can also give us your feedback because uh, for me, we do get to ask me. People just talk about um, Maasai. 
But then again, this is this is this is this is this beyond of anti finance bill protest in Nairobi died by drowning, a post mortem report has revealed. According to pathologist Denzel Omodi, a third year Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture Technology student who went missing at the onset of anti finance bill protest in Nairobi died by drowning, a post mortem report has revealed. According to pathologists who conducted the inquest, a thicker based general, Hago Funeral Home, Omondi had bruises at the back of his head and on his legs. Omondi, who was a quantity surveyor student, was protesting at the National Assembly and would be later seen at the university the following day, only to disappear on June 27th. Lawyer Apple Mboya, who is Omondi's cousin, said the family will conduct further investigations to unravel the mystery of their kin's death. There was nothing that showed that Denzel was um, in any way that could make people to look for his life. Because he was such an humble boy, I've known Denzel for over 10 years. Mutu wa ukoo nyumbani, haka nipigia simu wa kumba kuna jamba mbalo wana kuwa mtandao. Na zile ishara zanyosha kwamba ineza kuwa, Denzel na hake kuwa na kitambulisho chake cha shule na cha kitaifa. Ikabidi ni kimbie, ni kuje. Hapa jarao kago ni dibitisha kwamba ni yeye ya masi yeye. Kwa batimba ni kuta ikuwa ni mwili wake. There are still uh, areas that uh, are untied. We know that the, we have the, patho the pathology report. But uh, we, as um, Irungu has just informed you, there were bruises on his knees and on the back of his head. And uh, at the time he was put in the water, he was still breathing. So uh, we still want to pass you all other avenue so as you hear there was a torture because uh, when at the time he was uh, put in this particular water to drown you know he was still breathing and uh, he had not been uh, murdered yet and uh, right now the family is actually asking uh, all these uh, questions and are uh, seeking to get to the bottom of the matter and sometimes i do wonder what level of inhum what how inhuman would someone be and uh, to get to a level where they feel threatened and this is actually a student he was a third year student i believe he was doing a quantity uh survey he was doing he was he was a survey student at uh, the university and uh you know people felt threatened and that is why he was actually abducted but he had actually turned up to school the other day and uh this was uh denzel uh, you could see him being actually very very lively uh let me share a video of uh, denzel here uh being very very lively and uh he 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 was actually he was, he was an energetic man. Let me And uh, as I understand, that was just a bit of a video on sharing, but as I understand, even right now, there is um, the Law Society of Kenya is also working with families of, um, you know, to get information uh, with uh, families of uh, people who disappeared or young people who disappeared that were involved in that particular protest. And uh, even right now, I think the names of uh, these particular individuals, I think that the, 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 the names are actually, the, the list is actually still expanding even right now. But nonetheless, what do you make of um, what do you make of um, um, the abductions, and uh, also uh, what do you make of uh, some of uh, these uh, information that has uh, been shared by the these uh, LSK student uh, who was also abducted and uh, what he went through, even, even if he was not able to tell the whole story? What do you make of it, um, Slantoy? Um, first, it's just extremely sad seeing those videos yeah. and um, seeing that there are people who actually suffered and died because of this yeah. um, protest that was really important for everybody. Yeah. But the yeah. thing that I hate the most is that the police did not understand this thing was not planned. It was not yeah. um, 
there were no culprits who are inciting people it was just something that everybody wanted so i feel like they were, yeah. they were going for some people just to make an example yeah. from um mm. from those people not knowing that mm. the people are not protesting because we are told by someone or someone is paying mm. everybody mm. was out there so i feel like mm. it was just unnecessary to do the abductions because it was not stopping anything there was yeah. no one behind um the first first part of the protest of course yeah. uh when it went on we now started seeing goons and all these things but at first there was yeah. nobody who was behind anything so yeah. that is something they either they didn't want to see or they didn't want to understand nobody was behind yeah. the protest and yeah. uh right now right now people have talked about uh, what has uh, transpired uh, yesterday with uh Rayla odinga and um and um ruto signing uh, that particular ibc amendment bill uh we shall be yeah. talking about that but before we get into that let's talk about uh the the the, the, the demise of um bishop uh bishop alan kiuna uh, who of course is a founder of uh, the christian uh, jubilee church and uh yesterday i believe was it yesterday or today yes that was yesterday uh, when he succumbed and uh it was it was after a long struggle or after a long battle after a long battle with uh cancer uh have you have you have you encountered or have you um come across um alan kiuna maybe on tv or even uh, maybe uh in person maybe at any any particular occasion have you have you had an encounter with you so actually, I've I haven't had an encounter, but I've ever uh, been to their church because yeah. um, a friend invited me. Uh, but I saw the wife, but I never saw yeah. um, Bishop. So the church was yeah. really nice, and it was such mm. a good place of worship. But I've mm. actually never met the bishop himself. Oh, um, personally, I have seen him on TV. I have seen him on TV and uh, he was uh, quite energetic and also one of the things that i did get to see with uh, him and uh, the wife is that uh, they wanted to be that uh, model couple where people can also look up to them maybe younger couples can look up to them and uh, uh see see how to 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 build or make make their relationship that is what they wanted to do uh, at the end of the day but nonetheless uh, right now there is uh, that particular report you can also see that there's that particular report uh, which has come out and uh, they are talking about uh, his long struggle with cancer, uh, which is uh, what he has succumbed to. And uh, at 57, uh, he did uh, pass on around noon uh, before his body was transferred to uh, the Lee funeral home. Uh, his yeah. wife, uh, Kathy Kiuna, they say his wife, Kathy Kiuna, in a, in a lengthy Instagram post in 2019, revealed that he had been diagnosed with cancer in 2018. Um, talking about cancer, talking about cancer, I would I would say something that um, when you look at how the treatment of cancer in Kenya, it has it's quite quite expensive, and I don't know what you feel about should the government do more or what can be done to make sure that uh, there is a, a better care of our people in terms of cancer. I, I feel like there should the, there should be insurances that help with people who cannot afford that much the problem yeah. with um insurances that are there it only supports the rich yeah. the, most people who give up instantly when they are diagnosed because you know the drugs are very expensive the um, appointments the doctor uh, doctor appointments very expensive you know yeah. i have i have um, an experience where i had a relative she was getting yeah. into debts, just trying to survive and just trying to get treated. So it's really expensive for someone who doesn't have that much money. So maybe they should just, you know, come up with in um, government, you know, sponsored insurance or yeah. at least just make the drug um, kind of affordable for some people. Yeah. Okay, I, I agree with you. I, I agree with you 100% because when it comes to the treatment, I have had so many people uh, talk about the issue of our treatment of our cancer and uh, most of them decide to go to India where they get the they get their treatment in India. 
Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, for people who are trying to just, you know, even I think there was this particular parliamentarian, her name was Beth Mogo. Uh, at some point, she also, if a parliamentarian found it difficult to also cater for these particular bills, and you understand they have covers, then what yeah. about an ordinary uh, Kenyan uh, who is also Saka, who is also facing the same? I would actually be very, very difficult. But nonetheless, our condolences to the family and uh, friends yeah. and also the congregants at uh, uh, the Jubilee Christian Church. I would say that uh, I do hope that uh, maybe perhaps uh, there will be a way that uh, maybe perhaps even uh, people can get to find uh, that particular assistance in terms of uh, 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 yeah. treatment for cancer uh, in the yeah. country. This is the Kenyan Podcast. You can always follow us on our different social media platforms. We are on Twitter at Kenyan Podcast. We are on Instagram at Kenyan Podcast. And uh, you can also find us on the reds as well, as well as also on YouTube. Uh, Melita, you also did have a story uh, to share with us. Yeah, I also wanted to talk about um, a few things that are just, yeah. that are I actually just reports that were made. And yeah. uh, I want to talk about the um, Kenyans that are dying in the Middle, yeah. Middle East countries. Because the working there, those who are working there. Yes, the ones that go to um, seek for work, the ones that you know are working there. It's just okay. there's been very many tragedies, but actually there has been now a report of people. The yeah. number, the numbers that are um, dying there in the Middle East, and it's such an unfortunate story. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, just a minute. Go on. So now um, the uh, Prime Cabinet se- uh, Secretary, Musalia Mudavadi, for yeah. Foreign Affairs, was actually yeah. talking about the numbers um, of Kenyans that are in the Middle East and the ones that are actually dying. And he was saying there's 316,000 um yeah. kenyan people that have died in the middle east and the countries yeah. are like saudi arabia iran yeah. you know um this yes. yeah Lebanon. yeah but the highest number is um saudi arabia and i've actually been seeing these things about uh middle east so many people that move there they actually end up being either it's um human trafficking um dying or even just getting into very hard labor and it's not the job that you've been told maybe you have been told here you're going there to work as a you know waitress or you know as something that you're open to then you reach there it's a different story and he was actually uh speaking on that and also he said um currently four hundred and sixteen thousand kenyans are still working there now as we speak and you know it's a really um it's a really uncomfortable topic because you know migration is really high right now every kenyan is trying to move but sometimes we move to a place where we don't even um understand how it works or you know maybe we are not as accepted there so it's it's kind of very um sickening that this is happening and actually even last year they were still talking about this but unfortunately people are still just going there and sometimes um they don't go there with uh, the right way because sometimes they're um by um companies that are not legit and he was saying that to track kenyans actually when they are not registered with Kenyan missions. So that was the conversation that was taking place there. That was the conversation that was actually taking place of those Kenyans that are, you know, dying. And yeah. also, I don't know if you have heard, there's a um, Kenyan, uh, he's called Steve, who is currently, um, he's being set for execution because he was an, in an altercation yeah. where he was yeah. in an altercation where um a yemen nat- uh, national died and yeah. now kenya uh, the kenya government is trying to handle that case with the embassy for yemen 
so that yeah. they can know what will happen to him. Uh, if you do get to ask me, 316 people, that's quite a, that's a quite a huge number. Mudavadi was talking about, uh, you know, 316 Kenyans dying uh, in the Gulf since 2002. And, uh, yeah, sorry, I said 316,000. It's 316. No, 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 it's not 1,000. It's uh, 316. Yeah, 316. It's not 1, but yeah, 416,000 so, are working yeah. there. Oh, okay. Uh, that's, yeah. uh, that's a good to put the numbers in perspective. So what I would say is that... Um, you remember just the other day Ruto was talking about, you know, we do have a whole lot of uh, workers. We have been in negotiations with this country, with that country, with that country. But, uh, you know, the Gen Z and the rest of uh, the populace are, are saying that why why keep on telling people to go work there and there instead of uh, trying to spur the local economy so that we have a more local creation of our jobs right in the country, uh, which is a good question, uh, by the way. Uh, but nonetheless, I would love to see more action because you remember when, um, uh, what do you call him? Um, Alfred, Mut Alfred Mutua was uh, the foreign minister. He had talked about addressing this particular issue of having our Kenyan, especially women, Kenyan women going out there, being abused, some of them, you know, being killed in uh, those particular Gulf countries. And then again, it becomes a story. It has become sort of normalized at the end of the day, uh, which yeah. is a bad, big, big problem right here in the 254. But uh, yeah. maybe perhaps one of the ways in which it can be addressed is having proper labor laws and also uh, one of the things that can also be done is also having um uh what do you say, what do you call these uh when you're having to look at this particular agency some of these particular agencies are not are not working the way they are supposed to work and therefore there should be a thorough scrutiny of these particular agencies uh so that uh, maybe perhaps we can get um you know the right uh registered agencies uh being also you know having an oversight on these particular agencies at the end of the day uh, but nonetheless, that is uh, something that should be looked into. We do not want Kenya suffering anywhere. You know, people talk about you'd rather be in Kenya and, uh, you know, trying to cope with life than going out there. But people are also desperate for these particular jobs. I couldn't to an end Katal, Nagaf, na Lebanon, na, 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 na other places because they have, because they have, when they have better options here, yeah? what happens is what one and a palette after doing a pastures. Uh, kwa sababu huku wakuna pastures. Uh, this is the Kenyan Podcast, like I told you. I remember to connect with us on our social media platforms, on Twitter, on Instagram, and also on Facebook. Uh, it's yours, uh, Truly Spikes. Uh, we also do have uh, Melita uh, on the other side. Uh, she actually represents on a platform known as The Young Force TV. Uh, so make sure you also check her out on uh, YouTube as well. As you we wind up, I just want to touch on the issue of um, the Olympics. It's coming up very, very soon, I believe in two weeks also. And yeah. uh, we are hoping that our Kenyan team will make us proud uh, this particular time. And I'm also hoping that, uh, you know, there is a whole lot of our preparedness. There are other times we have heard about challenges, even with corruption, with the mismanagement, mismanagement, mismanagement of the teams. But uh, for this particular year, we are hoping that things will go on smoothly uh, in Paris. And uh, we hope to see those particular medals coming back to the country. Uh, Faith Keep Your Gone did uh, justice in the recently concluded um, Diamond League, I believe. And uh, she actually came up came up on top, and uh, that is uh, something uh, that we are supposed to be very very happy for. The 30 year old uh, is a two time Olympic gold medalist uh, in the 1500 meters, and uh, mm -hmm. having won Rio de Janeiro in 2016 and also Tokyo in 2021. And uh, this particular year, we are hoping to see also you know her get back in the field and also do more of uh, what she does. Uh, for you, do you are you do you follow sports that much and athletics? No. Actually, um, don't, but obviously, when it comes to the news uh, about Olympics, especially about Olympics, nothing else. Yeah. I, I don't like follow it up when it's not about Olympics or something big. Yeah. But if it's just the minor things, no, I, yeah. I don't. Yeah. All right. We are hoping now on the show, on the Kenyan podcast, we can have a guest uh, who is a sports analyst uh, very, very soon. And I'll just get us a bit of a breakdown on uh, how that particular one uh, might go. But uh, but nonetheless, uh, when it comes to matters of uh, entertainment right now, things are looking uh, not so bad. I think uh, there are some shows that are expected to be uh, coming up this particular year. But one of the things I would actually say is that uh, Red Sun is back. We all know Red Sun. If, no one, if you do not know Red Sun, I think then you are missing out uh, on a lot. Red Sun has actually a new song, uh, which is known as uh, Like Me. And I think we shall be ending uh, the show on that, but with that particular one uh, by Red Sun. At some point, uh, Red Sun was scandalous. You know, there was a fight that happened between him and the, the, the producer uh, because Red Sun was saying, oh, the producer is not giving me my music, things like that. But uh, still, he still managed to, you know, to uh, get past that. 
and now he has new music which which we can celebrate and um do you listen to dance hall music are yourself melita yeah i do listen to dance hall i feel like i listen to so many genres but yeah. i'm so um familiar with dance hall like i yeah. really know a lot of me um, um artists music yeah. like yeah. i listen to it yeah so we are hoping we are hoping that uh we can get more of this particular music from our red sun and uh, we also yeah. do hope to have a couple of artists very soon on this particular platform just getting to interview them and get to know more about them on this particular show for now it's me homeboy spike sending out until uh, next time i want to wish you happy and a productive rest of the day and uh i also do hope that uh, you get to connect with us on our socials malita what's your socials once again as we finish so you can check out uh, melita underscore silanchoi underscore instagram and uh, also young force tv TikTok, young force tv youtube and uh, also instagram young force tv uh, make sure you follow the platform and uh, i'll be there to always add on um any information or any news that you need to hear okay. about okay that's our whatsapp our family uh make sure you uh cut uh, melita on a uh, young force once again for me uh it's your homeboy spikes and now make sure you subscribe share and uh, also comment where we, when you are able to uh we are winning up uh, with this particular term which is known as a uh, like me by red sun Like me anymore. We make a girl put the coat.